Hello there and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about seahorse, their care, how to buy them and how to feed them. So if you've never kept seahorse before or you're thinking about keeping seahorse, then just be aware that they are one of the hardest animals to keep alive in the aquarium hobby. They require perfect water quality which is stable at all times with no fluctuations. They have very little tolerance to changes in their environment and they need extremely low flow in their aquarium with an abundance of copepods and amphipods, with lots of long sea grasses and algae. They're not something to be taken on a whim, and you must be aware that these are very specialised animals which can only be kept by experts. So if that all sounds good to you, then I'll go through a few basics with regards to the care of seahorse. So firstly, as I've already mentioned, they need a very specialised environment to live in. Water quality is a massive issue for them, and they need aquariums with zero nitrate and obviously none of the nitrite or ammonias. But not only that, they need it to be stable at all times, which is really hard to achieve because the amount of food you need to give a seahorse will produce a lot of waste. So you may be required to use a lot of chemical filtration on your aquarium, such as nitrate removers. It also needs to be stable with no fluctuations in salinity or pH. So you're going to need to have auto doses on your aquarium and probably an auto top up. With regards to the aquarium itself, it needs to be pretty big and have a lot of space and open areas for the seahorse. Because seahorse are from seagrass areas, they tend to like large flat areas full of algae and seagrasses. So this is something you're going to need to take into account when designing your aquarium. Macro algae are going to be your best friend, and if you can get seagrass, then that's going to be something you want to add to the tank. Also bear in mind that because they're such slow feeders, tank mates for seahorse are almost at zero. Perhaps things like gobies, blennies, and some pipefish are good compatible tank mates however anything that's going to outcompete the seahorse for food you can take off the list pro, pro tip. Tip. tip when looking for a seahorse go to your aquatic center and ask to see the seahorse feeding always buy a seahorse that's feeding in store and if it's not feeding leave it there also make sure the seahorse has been in the store for at least a couple of weeks to settle in that way you know that most parasites and diseases would have already appeared and been treated so when it comes to buying a seahorse there are a few species on the market, however if you're new to it, the best ones to buy are the kudu seahorse. One reason is they're tank bred, which means they're a sustainable animal, they haven't been taken from the wild, which is great for the environment and the areas that these seahorse come from, you're not diminishing the local stocks. Also you know that they're going to be feeding on something, because to be tank bred and raised they would have been trained to feed on stuff. And normally it will be mysis, which is great, because that's a diet you want to give them. Also, tank-bred seahorse don't tend to come in with some of the diseases that the wild ones do. So a tank-bred seahorse is what you're looking for. Whether it be a kudu or anything else, make sure it's one of those. Now, seahorse like to be in small groups. They're a very social animal. If you can get more than one, that's great. They will live on their own, and you can add to the group later on. But if you want to get a small group to begin with, that's the ideal situation. Obviously, make sure that they're all feeding and they all look healthy. Look on the fins for any kinds of damage, make sure the body isn't velvety in appearance because that's a big factor in seahorse disease. And just look to see that they are generally moving around their enclosure and looking in good health. Now when you've got your seahorse home and your environment is perfect as I've described, you're going to want to try and feed it. Now feeding seahorse, even ones that have been tank bred which are used to eating frozen mysis or brine shrimp, can be a chore in itself. The first thing you'll notice is seahorse are lazy. They basically want to wait for the food to come by them and then they'll snatch it out of the water column as it floats by. So this is no good if you've got strong power heads, which you shouldn't do if you've got seahorse, or if your flow from your sump is quite strong. So you're going to want to turn off all your pumps, every single one of them, and basically have no water movement. And then as you can see in this video, you're going to want to have a turkey baster or something similar where you can put the food directly in front of the seahorse. Now they will eventually become trained and they will associate the turkey baster with food and they'll move towards it and feeding will get easier and easier. However, initially they may not even see the mice as food or they'll be scared of the turkey baster. So you need to float parts of mice by it. You'll see pretty quickly whether the seahorse is interested because it will move its eyes and it will move towards the mice. If it ignores it, then you've got a bit of work on your hands. But normally eventually the seahorse will feed um, it may take a little bit of effort. Sometimes what I've had to do is use a turkey baster on bits of mice and make them move about in a lifelike way and they'll go for it eventually. Or you can give them live mice, which is another way of getting your seahorse fed. Anyway, that's the basics for seahorse care. I mean, that you can go into depth and it can be a lot more complicated than that. 
that is a general overview of Seahorse. Hopefully I've put a few people off because if this sounds hard to you then you shouldn't be keeping Seahorse. So thank you for watching, do like this video and subscribe if you want to see some more of this kind of content. Please check out my Patreon page if you want to give me some support in making these videos. Thank you for watching and happy fish keeping!